Risk for Passion. Serving up at the breakfast buffet, we have Nathan D. Learn about his story and journey as he left school to pursue a career in the circus. I hope you all enjoy. And here we are. I am, I am very excited about my, my next guest here, um, Nathan D. Um, What's talking, up, Ray? Talking about, you know, taking risks and following your passion. This is the great story and journey that we have for you today. Um, so what's up, Nate? How you, how you been? How you doing? What's up, Ray? Thank you so much for those kind words. It's really a, a pleasure to be here and to, to catch up with you because, frankly, it's been a, it's been a minute. Yeah, it's been, uh, I think last time I saw you was in uh, the great old Dahlia's in New York City, man. <laughs> that sounds about <laughs> right. <laughs> that that or right. Evan, Evan Mayer's luxury uh, dorm room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Could could very well be. Yeah, could man. Could very well be. So, uh, you, know, you went from being, you know, a wrestler freshman year to, uh, you know, pursuing your dream of being in the circus, right? Uh, dropping yeah. out of, dropping out of NYU and pursuing this dream. So, if you want to touch on that, what made that decision? How'd you find this new passion? Sure, absolutely. So, um, yeah, starting with the with the with the wrestling, that was definitely wrestling was a, a big passion of mine, a big big pastime. You know, I've been wrestling for about ten years before I decided to to finally call it my my time and hang up my boots. Um, a St. A St. Louis native, right? <laughs> yeah, St. Louis from St. Louis, Missouri, and um, and yeah, chose chose NYU is like you know obvious choice for me. It's like a huge city, a lot a lot to do, a lot a lot to think about, consider. Um, so I had a great great time in college in NYU, and um, I ended up what, studying abroad as well. Uh -huh. What were um, you studying at NYU? I was studying conservation biology, okay, and environmental science. So I was doing a, a individualized major at the Gallatin School. Yeah. And uh, yeah, man, it was great. And then then I just yeah, my life started shifting a little bit. I spent a year abroad in Israel studying. And then it was there when I started to think, you know what, I, I think school's not not the, the place for me, the, the place where I can be my best self. So, um, yeah. And about that time is when I started getting into the circus. And I was like, man, where has this been my whole life? This is uh -huh. this is something. Uh -huh. And that's interesting, man. Just you know, you're some some people. NYU, that's their dream school, man. They they shoot for that, and you know, to go the opposite way, there must have been some struggle or or some you know conflict, maybe with you and your parents or you and someone else, right? Yeah, def definitely with my my grandmother. So I, I think um, it was tougher for her to to kind of understand where I was coming from. Um, in part because it was partially through her generosity that I could even be going there. Um, and then also she comes from a different generation where it's definitely go to school, become a doctor or a lawyer, st start your life. Like that's, that's the choice. And, and obviously like for me, I have great respect for people who do that and who, who that's what they're passionate about. But for me, I, I, those careers aren't appealing to me. That's not the draw. That's not what, what, uh, what gets me out of bed in the morning. And so it was certainly a little bit tough with her. And I think even today she's still asking me like, when are you going to finish school? When are you going to finish school? And I'm just like, you know, if, if I do, Nana, you'll be the first to know. But <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and that's, that's super important, especially now finding what you love and not, not just going for that nine to five, you know, get, getting that passion and getting that opportunity. So mm -hmm. how did you, how'd you come across, how'd you come across this? Was it something that you just went to and you looked into? Yeah, so I actually, I, I had a bit of a, a rough time that, that spring. I had a lot on my mind, and I said, you know what? Originally, it was just going to be a gap year. I was like, I'm going to go home. I'm going to figure out kind of like what, what, I'm, what I'm about, what, what excites me. And so I went back to St. Louis, and I actually just went to the, the local circus show that happens every summer. And then um, it was different. It was different seeing it as an adult and being like, hey, wait a second. This is something that adults are doing, and people are working this way. So I, I – I, got in touch with a woman who um, actually I'd known from a long time ago, but never followed up with. And she was, uh, she runs a youth circus program 
And she said, hey, if this is what you want to do, you know, basically show up. And so I showed up that first day and it was uh, me and a bunch of a bunch of youth circus performers. So like some of them were 15, 16 years old. I was 22, 23. So there's a bit of an age gap there. But, <laughs> you know, like you, that's part of the circus and you have to learn to work with people of different ages. So it's yeah, it was a learning experience for sure. Yeah. And there's probably there's a lot a part of it. Right. I mean, when people <laughs> think of the circus, you think of like, you know, the animals and and stuff like that but what interests you was it like the was it what are they called the trapeze right but yeah exactly so for me right off the bat i was interested in acrobatics so like uh-huh. all of the all of the the tumbling all of the group stuff where you're building these like four people standing on each other and the throwing and catching all that for me i was like man that's that's cool cuz it it had like you know the the athleticism and also the artistic and also the kind of like gymnastic style so for me it was just a uh, super appealing yeah and i remember you in the in the nyu wrestling room doing some handstands and uh, flips and stuff so yeah I'm sure that, that stuff came to you naturally yeah <laughs> it was a joy man that's that for me that's what what circus is about is really like that that joy and then spreading that joy with the audience so you can kind of share kind of your passion with with the whole with the whole ring all right Right. And I'm sure it's a big, it's a pretty big business too. Is that, do you learn the business aspects of it as well? Yeah, absolutely. So, so basically I'll, I'll take you real quick through kind of my trajectory is I was, uh, I, I trained with this, this program in St. Louis for a year. And then I went off and auditioned to the national circus school in Montreal. Um, mm-hmm. and that's in Quebec, Canada. And that's really where the, the higher level training's at. Um, and it's up there where, where you learn a bit more about the business, a bit more about your options um, and sort of start to find out where where you feel you fit in, um, and that's another tricky situation because uh, well not tricky situation it was a beautiful time but I ended up leaving that school as well, uh, yeah. and that's a long story but but um, <laughs> <laughs> but ba- ba- basically uh, yeah you learn about what your options are and so some people say you know what I want to work for Cirque du Soleil that's my dream and they mm-hmm. they make it happen some people say hey I'm I'm a little bit more interested in traditional circuses and like the more kind of smaller scale family vibe. And that, that's uh-huh. for me where I more fit in. So uh-huh. uh, you get, you have a lot of freedom of choice actually in yeah. the type of, the type of performing you want to do. That's awesome. What was the training like? Like, did you have to learn certain moves? Did you have to have a certain diet? Was there a certain, certain workout regimen? Yeah, all that, all that. So, um, we, we had pretty, in St. Louis, we had pretty regular scheduled practices where you show up and you've got, you know, handstands, you've got tumbling, you've got classes in, you know, dance, classes in acting, um, pretty much anything you can think of that would be going on at a big show. And it's the same thing in circus school where you've got, you know, a pretty grueling day where you're waking up right, right in the morning and then you've got like handstand classes, ballet classes, acting. I said that already, but like, you know, and then your specialty. So the specialty in the circus, you drill that for like two, three hours a day with your team. And it's, you put in those hours. Awesome. What, what, what is your favorite thing to do? Have you, have you been on those bars, man? I see, I know on the pier, they had what the trapeze stuff and that, that always amused yeah. me. I'm like, man, how do guys do that? <laughs> yeah, man. The trapeze is beautiful. That's, that's something that I would love to get into in the future is, is working on the, the flying trapeze because that's, a, that's something they, um, it's a real traditional act, and so they don't offer it at the more contemporary circuses and the more contemporary schools. Um, you know, circus is, is a lot like uh, the dance world in that there's, like, more traditional forms, like, um, and then there's more, like, modern forms. And so, like, you'll get different different vibes, and, and different disciplines are more more popular with certain crowds or certain groups. So I like the traditional stuff, man. I'm all for that, like the, the, the classic tent shows and, and all that. I think for me that's... That's the true, the, the, my, 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 my passion for it. Yeah, and there's a lot of comparison to that in pro wrestling. You know, you got the big name, the big companies and stuff, and then you have the local shows, and you mm-hmm. have different, different wrestling, like Jap, uh, Japanese wrestling is much different than Mexico, and Mexico is much different than American style. I feel like there's a lot of similarities with, with you guys as well. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's, I, I'm super happy that you're bringing this up because for me, it's, that's uh, something I'm super interested in is that professional wrestling because um, we actually, a dear friend of mine, he, he went through the circus pathway, you know, like he went to circus school, he went to uh, Cirque du Soleil and he's been working performing. Then he made the switch and said, you know what? I've wanted to do WWE since 
since I was like a little kid, I guess not WWE, but professional <laughs> yeah, wrestling. wrestling. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pro wrestling since he was a kid, and he's he's on uh, recently signed to Next uh, yeah, NXT. Yeah, yeah, WWE. Yeah, so he signed, and he did it. He made it happen. So he made he made it happen, and it's he he's he's super hyped about it. He talks about that similarity where it's it's a big ring, it's a big stadium, and you just bring your energy, you bring your your talents to it. And, yeah, so I saw a lot of your stuff on it, a lot of his stuff, and how he's how he's translating it, man. You guys do a lot of cool stuff, man. I've been <laughs> I've been I've been following you, man. It's incredible, you know, the the bot just knowing your body and knowing your body position. That's it's it's amazing. Thank you, thank you, Ray. It means a lot, and I'm super excited to to catch up with you about that because you've been you've been working working for pro wrestling too, right? Yeah, this is about uh, two years now. So I mean. You know, it, a big difference from amateur wrestling. Let me tell you, now it's like the hardest adaption with me was, you know, reacting with the crowd. You knew a lot mm. with amateur wrestling, man. Tunnel focus, it's you and that opponent. Now you need yeah. that crowd. That's the crowd that, you know, you got to give them a reason why they're going to come and see you, right? Um, yeah, absolutely. That was, that was a big difference. Um, the training kind of stayed the same, you know, the weight room, the cardio, all that stayed the same. Uh, the flips, I don't know how I do the flips. <laughs> I, I just, I guess I just go and do them. Maybe I should yeah. take, maybe I should take some tumbling, man, but I just go, I just go F it. I'm going to try to do this backflip today. And I, <laughs> yeah, man. Work. I don't know how I do it, man. <laughs> at, at a certain point, your coach can, can hold your hand right up to it, but then you got to do the flip yourself. So you might as well just go for it at that point. Yeah. 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 But, um, so, so you also made, uh, you toured in a, in a lot of different countries, huh? Yeah. I've been fortunate enough to, in a, in a brief period of time, be able to perform a few places. So, um, definitely the highlight for me was we did a tour in, uh, in Puerto Rico uh -huh. and that was in, um, 2018, I believe. And we were, uh, we were touring, it was part of a, a social tour. So we were trying to, um, kind of spread the joy of circus with communities that were hit pretty hard by the hurricane, hurricane Maria. And they were still recovering, and so um, we were fortunate enough to tour on the island, and then go to uh, go off the mainland to 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 smaller islands, and kind of just like we'd set up the set up the mats, and then we put on a show for the the public, and that that meant a lot for me um, to be part of because it was just like you get to to say, hey, we're you know we're 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 not from here, we know you've suffered, but we're here to 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 put on a show for you, and so that. Yeah. That felt real good to be part of. Definitely, definitely. And uh, you've been you've been to a lot of places, huh? Argentina. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. What was your What was your favorite place? And like, what what was it like traveling these these other countries and learning different cultures? I'm sure different food and mm -hmm. you know adapting to different languages. Yeah, the funniest one. I'd actually. So I, I don't know if you saw documentary Game Changers, but I I had seen Game Changers and then I I turned vegan for a minute and then I. <laughs> I'm off to Argentina and Argentina, man, they eat so much steak. Every, everything they eat is beef. Like uh -huh. it's like they make, you know, it's like cows, cows, cows. And that was, that was something for me because, uh, I, I, you know, I obviously had to, I, I didn't want to miss out on anything. So I was eating, eating all the steak, all the everything. And then, but Hey, you know, it's different cultures. Yeah. And you got to really adapt to that culture. How, how long were these tours? So in Argentina, that was about uh, two months down there, uh -huh. and um, I was down there with uh, my girlfriend at the time, and she was performing a, a discipline called German Wheel, which is kind of like a human-sized hamster wheel, uh -huh. and she was also up on the flying trapeze. Uh -huh. um, and I actually wasn't performing that tour; I was helping set up with the set up with the structures and take down and passing out flyers, like doing mm -hmm. a lot of the background work and stuff. Yeah, and that yep. that meant a lot to just be down there and uh, be down there together and. Um, and be in a different country, you know, it's, yeah, it's and wonderful. Learning, and learning the career, you know, from the ground up, right? Putting, mm -hmm. you know, putting it all, putting the event together, selling, selling the, the posters, right? Handing out the tickets. That, that's probably a huge part of that as well. Yeah. And you learn a lot. I mean, you're always learning. I remember I was thinking, ah, you know, maybe it's, it's tough in the circus because there's always, there's always people in the ring and there's always, um, stuff that's going on that's like, wow, that's that's amazing. But there's a lot of work that goes in to make it happen. You know, we had to build all the bleachers ourselves, you know, out of out of the raw materials and we had to set up the stage, you know, it's like you get the permit from the city and then from that point you just have to do everything yourself. And you learn a lot about kind of uh, 
I gained a lot of respect for the whole process just being behind the scenes. So I, I think that's, that's a, a special lesson that the circus can teach you. Yeah, for sure. Um, what, um, you know, going back to the training and, and making the decision, what, what was, what is your favorite thing about the whole thing? Um, is it, is it the whole circus in general or is it the training? Is it the people? I'm sure just like amateur wrestling, you know, every wrestler gets along with each other. You could go to a yeah. different country and, and get along with, with the, with the wrestler. Is that, is that the same thing with you guys? Yeah, man, I, I, I have to say it's, it's the people. It's just like what you're describing. You know, you, you have that connection, you have that, that passion for the same thing. And then, um, for the time you're working together, whether it's a month, two months, some, some tours are like six months a year, but for the short ones, you, you come together and you're a bunch of strangers basically. And then you, uh, you go your separate ways, but you've had this really special experience together. So there's a saying in circus, they say, uh, see you down the road when it's mm -hmm. time to leave, because you, you know, you're going to run into each other again and it's going to be special when you do. So. Awesome. So, so you do tours with, with different people. It's not the same group, right? Yeah. Not always, you know, it depends. So, um, yearly shows that come back and back, they, they usually have a different cast, different acts, different numbers. Um, and some people are returning the same year. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately because of coronavirus, um, the, the show that would have been running right now in St. Louis is, uh, they had to postpone it, but, um, I'm hoping to do that next year and, and look forward to see who's coming back and who's, uh, yeah. And who's yeah. new. Yeah. Control what you can control. Right. Um, right. What what is what is some th things you've been doing you know during this whole time to just you know keep keep yourself relevant and keep yourself you know I'm sure you have to stay in shape somehow and continue mm -hmm. your routine. What have you been doing to keep up? Yeah, so I've been uh, I've set up a little weight set in my garage actually. Uh -huh. So I've been uh, hitting the weights a little bit, you know, going for my runs. I've been swimming in the morning, just trying to stay active. Um, and then when I get a chance to train, it's it's real nice. So there've uh, a few people are in town. Who I can train mm -hmm. with, who are uh, who are acrobats as well, and um, we got the chance to train before, and that's been great. And then the the biggest thing, honestly, is just like keeping the spirits up, because uh, you know with with these big forms of live entertainment, they're they're they were the first to go, and it's it's tough because like I'd love to be working right now, <laughs> as yeah. everyone would, you know, as uh -huh. everyone would, but but it's um, yeah, just keeping the spirits up and saying, hey, you know, it's it's gonna get better. Yeah, and keeping that love, right? Keeping that love and passion for it, you know? Mm -hmm. When you're doing something over and over again, you lose that, that passion. I feel like this whole pandemic really, you know, made everyone take a step back and miss what they loved, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. You take you, you start to take stuff for granted, and, and yeah, definitely, definitely. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. So you're back in St. Louis. Yep, back in St. Louis. St. Louis. Great town, great town. Uh, you know, when I went to uh, to go for the NCAAs, my favorite was Ballpark Village. <laughs> yeah, Ballpark Village. It's a great, great spot. Night out on the town. That seems like uh, right up your alley. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are some great things about St. Louis that you know? That it's part of your culture, St. Louis, man. I feel like everyone in St. Louis they they know each other, and it's a great, great, uh, you know, just culture and, and area. Yeah, you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of St. Louis. They say St. Louis is one of the, the country's biggest small towns or the smallest big towns. Uh -huh. uh, you can kind of you can kind of go either way with it, but it's um, honestly, man, St. Louis has great food. They got great food, great barbecue. They got great uh, great local restaurants, and um, it's just a small city. You know, it's affordable. Um, I'm saving money right now because I'm living at my, with my parents, and um, yeah, St. Louis is a great town. Yeah, I recommend it. So your your adversity moment, right? What is some adversity you've been through that is a part of your journey, a part of your story now? Yeah, my adversity moment, man. Um, I, I I think uh, well, most most recently in in the spring and summer, uh, early on in the spring, I was having some some mental health issues, um, and I think that was uh, in part because of the COVID and in part because of kind of other stuff that I hadn't really addressed. Um, and that, that was tough, you know, and I, I think just being able to stay positive and, uh, and think about, you know, counting my blessings, thinking about all the things I'm fortunate for. Um, I was experiencing a, a breakup as well and, you know, breakups can be tough. <laughs> it's tough to, to kind of go through these unexpected things. And I think, um, 
yeah, just just overcoming that was has been a, a blessing. Definitely, and uh, a setback is always a, a setup for a comeback in the future. Yes, sir. And, uh, That's exactly right. There we go. Right. So I'm sure once everything gets cleared, man, you'll be full steam ahead. I'm sure mm-hmm. you were you're doing some great things before this whole pandemic happened. What mm-hmm. what uh what was going to be next for you? That's a good question. So um, originally, my plan was to be working at uh, Circus Flora, which is a, a tent show in St. Louis in the in the summer and then in the fall midnight circus in chicago which is another tent show and they're a great organization both of these ones they're nonprofits. and uh midnight circus in chicago they raise money for local parks so like all their performances they set up in different parks around the city and then um the crowds come and uh and and all that money goes right back to the community so uh, plus it's a great show it's great people um so that that would have been what i was hoping to do with my immediate future and then um, maybe make a return to Montreal in the in the winter, spring, train, see people. Yeah, that's that's the life. Right, right, and it's great. I can tell you, you're really passionate about it. I would definitely love to come down to St. Louis, maybe work out with you guys, see what I could do. <laughs> Anytime, Ray. You would pick stuff up like uh, like that. You're just such a such a natural athlete, and you got such a good attitude. Like, you'd be welcome anytime. Yeah. Anytime. Man. Yep. So. I like to always finish with this. We don't have to finish on it, but I always finish with this. Okay. Who is Nathan, who is Nathan D, and what do you want to be known for? Oh man, that's a tough one. I probably should should meditate on that one a bit. Nathan <laughs> Nathan D. The, the, here's what I tell you: the who could always change, yeah. but the what could stay because it, it it makes you accountable for your who. Yeah. Okay. Remind me one one more time. What is that? It's who is Nathan D? Who is and, Nathan? Who, all right, I'll say who is Nathan D now, and what okay. do you want to be? What do you want to be known for? Okay. I get everyone on so, this. Don't worry. Yeah, man, it's <laughs> tough. It's tough. All right, right now Nathan D is uh, is uh, a young man who's trying to find out his his purpose in life, and. Um, I'd like to be known as as someone who uh, who always stays true to themselves. I like that. I like that. So uh, you talked about a little bit uh, about meditation and and you know going vegan. Um, mm-hmm. Is that is that you know making changes in your lifestyle? How did that come about? Is it just from seeing these different cultures, you know, interacting with different people through you know your your career and all that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I try not to get too too stuck into one way of thinking. Um, and, and part of that is that when, when you meet different people, they've got different beliefs and stuff. And, you know, there's actually a lot of vegan people in the circus. Um, there's also a lot of hippie people in the circus and the two kind of, they, they like to eat a lot of plants and they like to, you know, um, be, be all that in terms of like, uh, yeah, kind of more, yeah, they like meditating too, you know, there's a type and I, I, I have a lot, I, I came around on that because I, at first I was pretty, uh. Well, I was influenced by the paleo, the paleo community. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I was, I was pretty into that for a while. I, I think it's all good. It's all useful, but ultimately you have to figure out what works best for you and your body. Yeah. Um, I'm not someone who's going to give up meat entirely, but I do take that into consideration. You know, I'm not going to eat a big steak and then do a workout. Why? Cause I'm going to feel heavy. And mm-hmm. so it's like, uh, you just got to start to understand, Hey, the foods I eat have an effect on my body and there's not a right or wrong, but there's, um, uh, there's appropriate times and context, you know? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, you guys do a lot of yoga. I know I started doing yoga my senior year in college and it really helped me out with, you know, little nagging injuries from amateur wrestling. And, you know, I always felt great. I always did it at night. I always did hot yoga at night and it kind of just Ooh. relaxed my whole body. Yeah. That sounds great, man. Yoga, stretching, just anytime you can take a moment and see, hey, how, how am I feeling today? What's what's going on? What's the stuff that I've been ignoring? You know, you can you can really. It, it, that's something I feel is like uh, t- to be a professional and to work for a long period of time. Y- you have to like you have to take care of your body, um, and that's a big difference from you know I think my experience in wrestling where it was like push 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 through it push through it you got this, and then that's great if you got like a four-year, eight-year career, but then after that, you got to take a step back and say, hey, I'm, I'm a professional now. I, I think that's something that was a, a change of philosophy for me. Mm-hmm. 
Yep, taking care of the body. It's all about longevity, right? Longevity. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Awesome, my man. It was great, great to talk to you and see you, man. I definitely you too, would, right? Definitely like to take a trip out there. So uh, where Anytime. can people find where can people find you if they're interested in going into the circus or just interesting stuff that you're doing and then once this whole pandemic is over and we could, you know, go out to live events, where can we find you and see you? Right on. You can see me in St. Louis perform. You can see me in Chicago. You can always get a hold of me on my Instagram. My, my name's uh, Nathan D, N-A-T-H-A-N underscore underscore D-E-E. Um, and just, you know, stay in touch, Ray. It's been great talking to you. And uh, I hope to see you down the road. Awesome, my man. I appreciate you. Thank you. What, what do they say? See, see you down the road. See you down the road. Ha, 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 ha.